Hello and welcome back to this course. In this session, we are going to see how we can interface an ADC to convert an analog input into digital one. So let's start. Open STM32 QID. Click on start new STM32 project. It will initialize the target selector. Now go to board selector tab and type the target board which is Nucleo F401RE. Select the board, click next, give the project name. I'm giving ATC. Click yes to initialize all the peripherals with their default mode. Now wait for the device configuration tool to initialize. So this is the pinout and configuration wizard. Now clear the pinouts. Now go to pinout menu, select clear pinouts and click yes to clear all the configuration. We need to configure an ADC channel so that we can connect a potentiometer to this channel and read the analog value at the input. So click on A to Z tab. At the very first you will find ADC1. Click on ADC1 peripheral and you will see there is various input channels given for single ADC as we have already discussed in the features that it provides 19 channels with 16 external channel that is from input 0 to input 15 2 internal channel one is temperature sensor and one is for V reference internal channel one channel which is dedicated to V back channel that is used to monitor the battery level so we'll be going to initialize input channel 8 as soon you will configure input channel 8 you will see that pb0 is configured as the input channel now why i have configured this input channel 8 because the shield contains a potentiometer which is connected to this pin when you stack up the shield over your nuclear board next thing we need to enable is v reference internal channel that is we have to enable the internal reference voltage so that whatever conversion is being done that will be done with respect to this reference voltage now if you see in the configuration window you will see parameter setting in the adc section like clock prescaler you can select the prescaler as per your convenience I'm just leaving it as default. This is the resolution. That means what bit resolution you want to use for ADC. So I'm using 12 bit as I have already mentioned in the feature that it offers 6, 8, 10 and 12 bits resolution. So I'm selecting 12 bits. Data alignment. Leave the data alignment as right alignment. Scan conversion mode. You can enable this. Continuous conversion. Enable this so that a single channel is converted continuously discontinuous and dma is disabled next is end of conversion selection then you want to enable eoc flag at the end of all conversion that means we need a flag after completion of each conversion next is adc regular conversion mode because we have enabled a single channel and we want to converting that channel regularly therefore it is coming under regular conversion mode if i enable multiple channels then you have to select them as per their rank like if i have a single channel therefore the channel has been given rank one and with channel number eight sampling time you can select whatever is best for you right now i am selecting the maximum one injected conversion mode it's a mode of conversion in which the regular conversion mode will be interrupted and processor will be forced to perform this conversion first watchdog as i said watchdog is used for a level monitoring of input signal so that's all for the configuration part now go to rcc select hse as bypass clock source go to clock configuration select hse and type the maximum clock frequency now go to core src folder and open main.c now if you scroll down main.c you will find in the private variable section a handle type definition is defined for adc as hadc1 it's very important variable that will be used in each of the function like in this controller there is only a single adc but there are controllers in STM32 that having multiple ADC like ADC1, ADC2, ADC3 and so on. So if you are using the functions for ADC, then the function will be applicable to all ADCs. But what ADC we have enabled is selected by this handle tag there. So we have enabled ADC1. Now before moving on, we need to define some private variable for our code. So let's define uint 16 underscore t that means 16 bit integer value as number of steps which is equal to 0 initially next we need to define 
the step size which is a float type variable and in the previous session we have seen how we can calculate the step size which is the reference voltage that means 3.3 divided by the maximum number of discrete symbol that means 4096 okay and finally the input voltage that means how much input voltage is coming from this ADC channel now as we have look for drivers and function related to GPIO in the driver folder similarly we need to go for looking drivers and functions related to ADC for that go to drivers folder stm 32 f 4 xx hl driver open inc and look for adc.h double click on the file and hl underscore adc.h file will be opened now if you scroll down this file you will see all the structure definition related to adc macros defined if you keep on scrolling you will find the functions for adc now these are the functions for adc related to initialization and deinitialization function next input output operation function so the very first is hl adc start this function will be used to start the adc and if you see the parameter that it takes it takes the handle tab definition for hadc that means we need to pass here the handle tab definition defined for adc1 so let's copy this function and go to main.c now in the main function after the initialization of peripherals clock gpio and adc we can start the ADC in the user code begin to end to section. Paste the code here. Give the parameter as HADC1. Now why I have used ampersand? Because if you see the ADC start function, it accepts a pointer type variable. Okay. So in order to pass the pointer variable, we need to add the address of this variable which is defined here as ADC handle type def. So by writing ampersand, we have passed the address of this variable. That means we have converted this simple variable into pointer variable. Now come back to adc.h file. There is adc stop, adc pole for conversion, adc pole for event, start it, it stands for interrupt, start dma. We have not discussed dma so just leave this. Next is hl adc get value. That means you can get the value of particular ADC channel using this function. Now after starting the ADC we need to get the value of ADC but before that we have to make sure whether the conversion has been completed or not. In order to check for the conversion completion we have two methods. Either we can poll for conversion that means we can wait for a certain time period and then get the value but the second thing is we use interrupt right now we have not discussed interrupt so this section will be focused in upcoming session for now we can only wait for the conversion to complete using a decided timeout so this is the function that is hal underscore adc underscore pole for conversion that takes two parameter one is the handle type for adc second parameter is the timeout that means for how much time you need to wait for the conversion to complete so just copy this function go to main.c now i'm going to wait for the conversion in while loop so i have pasted here now i'm giving 100 millisecond timeout the conversion and handle type tap as hadc1 which is the adc handle type def we can add comments for your reference that function used to start adc this function do wait for 100 millisecond in order to complete and okay so we have started adc then we have given time for conversion now we need the converted value so again come back to the adc.h file and copy this function hal adc get value it also take the parameter the handle type def now if you see this function returns a 32 bit type integer value so we need a variable that will store the value return by this adc get value so just paste the code here and assign the value to number of steps variable created by us now edit the parameter by ampersand hadc1 and add comment get the converted value what we have done till now is we have started adc we have given a time that is 100 ms in order to complete the conversion now we have received the converted value in this variable that is number of steps. Next thing is we need to calculate the input voltage. So getting input voltage received at ADC channel input voltage will be equal to 
how we can calculate the input voltage the formula that i have discussed in the previous session that is number of steps multiplied by step size we are done with the coding section now go to project click on build down now the build finished with zero error and zero warning that means the code compiled successfully now take the target board connect it with the shield as we have done in the seven segment interfacing now connect it with the system go to run debug as stm32 cortex m c c++ application click ok to close the configuration window and now this will upload this code to your target board once the code is uploaded successfully the perspective of your ide will change to debug now if you see here in these windows you will find various tab like live expression expression modules registers so these tabs offer you to explore expression used in the code or monitor the live expression that you have used in your code and the value associated with it you see here it's given add new expression click this and type the expression that you want to see I'm interested in watching number of steps that means what is the number of steps written by the ADC next I'm interested in the value of input voltage calculated the value is in the right side so just resize to get the value displayed here now click on this resume button and you will see the number of steps and the input voltage calculated corresponding that particular number of steps now if you adjust the potentiometer values you will find the reading of number of steps as well as input voltage also vary so that's all in this session now you can close the project just click on terminate and you will be come back to your editor window go to project and click on close project